Hello everybody. Welcome to the video where I'll be teaching you how to make small non-malicious viruses. Now these viruses are non-malicious that means you can use them to annoy your friends but not to maliciously harm them. That's the first thing of course. They, they don't require any prior knowledge as I said so let's get started. The only thing you're going to need is a notepad. So let's just open notepad here. Now I'm doing this in uh, Windows 10. If you're do using Windows 7, I'll give the instructions in the details below. Now we'll be writing VB scripts. That's Visual Basic Script. So let's get started with the first initial small thing. Now I'll explain what I write and as I write, I'll keep on explaining. So what I've done here is basically the first line says two, which is a markdown of where a loop is beginning. Now you might know loops because of basic C programming. So wherever do is, it is followed by a loop. Now what loop does is it loops back to the statement where do was. So anything in between is always looped across. So what this program will do is give a message box. Message box is the same pop-up that you get in Windows, saying virus found again and again. Now, how many no matter how many times you close it, it will still give that message. Let's save it. Now be careful while saving it, you're gonna have to save it as first select all files and then save it as whatever you want the extension should be vbs so coming back as you saw we saved the file as virus.vbs now to run this you're gonna have to double click on it once you double click on it it'll start giving pop-up saying virus found now it was an infinite loop because there was no exit statement. So that message box will be looped over again and again, and it will keep on giving virus found no matter how many times you close it or press okay. So to exit this, be careful. You will not be able to exit this with any admin or special privileges. What you have to do is open your uh, task manager and locate this program called Microsoft Windows based script host. Now you're going to have to close this and automatically that box or the pop-up message box is out of your window. To close this in Windows 7, it's a different way. You're going to have to look for something called W script or C, C script, which I'll be mentioning in details. And that's it for the first virus. Okay, so now since we saw the first virus, which was very basic, we'll be moving on to something bigger. Now we'll try to manipulate the host's keyboard by toggling caps lock on and off. So what we'll, we'll be doing is writing a script that will toggle caps lock on and off in after a given certain point of time so that uh, the writing and typing of anything becomes difficult and nearly impossible. Let's get started. Okay, so again, I'll be explaining the code as I go on. So first, we need to create a W script object. So what we'll do is we'll write a variable name called WSH shell, which will be our object. So it will be an object of W script, which is the type of visual basic script. And we'll call a method called create object. Now this will create an object of type W script dot shell. So what this does is it creates a W script shell object called WSH shell, which will be using to manipulate the keyboard. 
Now again, we'll start off with do, which marks our start of the loop. We do w script dot sleep of 100, where what it does is the script sleeps for 100 milliseconds. Now what we can do is use this object to send keys. So what we'll do is we'll use the object dot send keys parameter, which will send keys. And now we'll define which keys to send. Now, if you're sending keys, like special keys like caps lock or anything, it should be closed in curly braces, which defines that it's actually a predefined keyword. So caps lock is a predefined keyword. And inside curly braces, it defines that you have to hit caps lock. Now, since we have hit caps lock, what we'll do is we'll loop back again. So it sleeps, hits caps lock, loops back again. So this sleep, what it does is it simulates a little bit of time delay between every caps lock hit. Otherwise, it'll keep on hitting caps lock at very fast speed. And it's very hard to visualize that. Again, let's save this file. And we'll save this as caps.vbs and change it to all files. Now save. Now that we've saved the program, we'll minimize it and run the caps.vbs script. Now what it does is it'll keep on toggling your caps lock, which is hard to visualize unless you see the light on your keyboard or you can type something out and see so you can type and i'm not hitting my caps lock right now but it will all it's alternatingly hitting my cap lock after a certain interval of time so you can see it's alternating between caps lock on and caps lock off so you can see that it's automatically doing that which is very hard for the person who's typing if he doesn't know how to close it to close it we again go to the task manager locate the microsoft shell microsoft windows based script host and end the task now once we have ended it we come back and we start typing we see that the caps lock is not being toggled again. Everything is in caps. Okay, so just to show you that it works, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my phone's camera to show how the light flickers on my keyboard. So this is my keyboard and that's my caps lock button right now. As you can see, the light on it is off. So when you hit it, the light switch switches on and when you hit it, the light switch switches back off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and hit the hit double click on caps.vbs. So as soon as I do that, the light starts flickering. So the caps lock is toggling. So whenever you type something, it's either in caps or not in caps. And it keeps on toggling at a difference of 100 milliseconds. So that you can see that it's being toggled otherwise if there was no delay you wouldn't be able to see the light flickering so that was our second virus which was again until little bit basic so after two viruses let's move on to something that is a little bit tougher or a little bit better to annoy your friends so for this, I've already written a script. I'll open that file and I'll explain it to you. So I'll open the VBS file here. It's called cd.vbs. So what it does is it keeps on ejecting your CD drive of your laptop or even your desktop within two seconds of difference. That's 2000 milliseconds. So what it does is it keeps on ejecting as i as i mentioned you plug it in and it ejects it again 
So it's very annoying because your device is always out and you cannot plug in any CD or any DVD. So let's start off with a variable name called OWMP. Now that's an object of WM player. Now WM player is the driver or you can say the module that controls all of the media drivers and all of the media hardware on your desktop or on your system. So the OWMP is what our object is. Now OWMP can have everything, all the media and all the input output ports and everything that your desktop or laptop has. So from that, we select a variable name called call CD-ROMs, which is OWMP's CD-ROM collection. Now, this is CD-ROM collection because you can have multiple CD-ROMs. If you have multiple CD-ROMs then you or CD drivers, then you can have a loop that ejects all of them that can be changed here, but we'll get to that. So for now, we have a variable name called, called CD-ROM, which has all your CD-ROMs and CD readers as an object. So what we do is we start off again with a loop. We do call CD-ROMs.item of zero dot eject. Now, as I mentioned, you can have multiple CD-ROMs. So your item of zero might be one CD drive. Your item of two might be one other CD drive. Item of one can be another CD drive. For most of the systems, it will be item of zero because most systems have only one CD drive. So what we do is call CD-ROMs.item of zero dot eject. So that will eject your CD-ROM. Again, wscript.sleep of 2000 milliseconds. So after two seconds, it will loop back again. So you keep on plugging it in and at intervals of two seconds, it will try to eject it. If it's already ejected, it won't do anything. But if it's plugged back in, it will be ejected again. So let's see how it works. So as I mentioned, I had saved it as cd.vbs and again, I'll be using my phone's camera to show you how it progresses. Now, opening my camera, you can see that my CD drive is in. There's nothing happening. Let's see what happens when I double click on cd.vbs. See, it has come out. Now, if it is out, it won't do anything because laptops are not capable of pulling in the CD drive. Now, as soon as you push it back in, it will wait for some time and plug it back out. You push it back in, wait for some time, and it comes out back again. This keeps on happening after intervals of two seconds. Now, to again stop this, open your task manager, and look for the same thing I told you, Microsoft Windows based script host and end the task. Now with that done, if you close it, it won't come out. So that was the third virus. That's it for today. If you want any more details or want any bigger problems when it comes to VB scripts and how to avoid them, you can write in the comments below and I can tell you the details. Thank you.